Hello and welcome to this video about guitar electronics and specifically this, the Stratocaster pickguard today and uh, this may look familiar to you but this side may look less familiar and if this looks like a complete mess to you then fear not this video is going to clear it up for you and there's really less going on here than you probably expect there to be and keeping to the habit of trying to make these videos as accessible as possible for people with all abilities I'm going to break this down from the very very basics so if you know the basics then you can skip ahead in the video the first component you'll find in your controls is one of these, a capacitor and these come in many different shapes and sizes and what a capacitor does essentially is it acts as a short circuit for high frequencies and what are high frequencies? High frequencies depend on the value of your capacitor. Usually we use 0.022 for humbuckers and 0.047 for single coils. And next is probably the most basic component of all. And this is the output jack. And the output jack is what your instrument cable goes into. And what this does, as you can see from the contact here, is this touches the tip of the output. And that's where the output of your guitar goes through and then the outside of the cable around this bit past the black bit this is the sleeve and this is your ground and you can see that all the inside here is touching the ground and these two connections here are where the guitar wire goes so you can see this one is touching right around all the inside bit so that's your ground and then this is the output which you can see a thin slip of metal goes down there from there so literally all this does is it takes your wires from the rest of your components and then transfers them straight into your instrument cable and next we have the five-way switch and as I switch this you should be able to see exactly what it does on the side and there's two rows so exactly the same is happening on the same side uh, the other side sorry and um, as you can see there's one on the end that always is connected to this bit so all this is doing is changing which of these connects to this one in any one position so what we do is we connect the pickups to these so as we flick through it it changes which pickups are on. So if we have neck on the end, middle, bridge, we have neck in that position. This position, it touches both of those. So we have neck and middle. Then just middle. Middle and bridge. And then just bridge. So the switch literally just switches between them. And if you're familiar with strats, you'll know that as you switch between the pickups, you also get different tone controls working. So that's what the other side is used for. That switches in exactly the same way although it's covered here so you probably can't see it from here but you can see it moving there at least so that's going to be a common on this side that means this side is the common as well and what we do is that one's going to be in that position as well so if we want neck and we know neck goes to one tone we'll have neck pickup on that one and neck tone on that one and we know middle also has one, so middle tone will go on that one and the other side of the switch will flick between those exactly the same way we do that and we want those two in parallel so we connect the two commons together and finally we have potentiometers and if you remember back to your science classes back at school you'll remember that the way we use resistance or the way we see it is we can imagine charge is water and the resistance that's shown in the circuit is like pipes and the larger it is the smaller the pipe is so it means the electrons have a harder way through it and potentiometers essentially is like presenting two pipes and these are inversely proportional so this for instance is a 250k part which means that the resistance between this lug and this lug is always going to be 250 but the resistance between this and this one and the resistance between this one and this one can vary and this is what you find on the bottom of your volume and tone pots so we twist these and twisting them moves a wiper in the middle here and you can see the indent here is the limit of where you can move it to 
as the wiper hits the indent. And essentially what this does is the wiper moves that way for instance, makes it closer to that one which is connected to this end here, or it moves this way, moving it closer to that one. And we have a track of resistive material here. So the closer it is to one, the lower the resistance, the further it is from another, the longer. And the whole length of resistive material is going to be 250k as this is a 250k pot. And what this means is that, as you know from volume and tone pots, we can bleed off the signal by showing different resistances, either to the output or to ground. So now let's look at what those components do when they're put together. And let's start by looking at a volume control. So if we remove everything else, this is what's connected to the volume control. We have the pickup being the input into it. Then we have the output being the jack. And on the back of the pot, on every single pot you'll find in your guitar, they'll all be grounded. So we have the pickup ground connected to that, and the jack ground also connected to that. And you see this leg is also connected to the back of the pot. So all of those are connected. And as you can see, the pickup input comes into the left one, and as we've already discussed about how a potentiometer works, that's connected to this side of the track, then the output is connected to the wiper, and then the right side of the track is connected to ground. And then next is the tone control, and as we can see, the input, again, is the pickup. And this time it's going to the middle lug, and we're only using two here, we're using the middle lug and the right lug. And the right lug is connected to a capacitor. And as we've discussed already, a capacitor is like a short circuit for high frequencies. So what this is doing is this is taking short frequencies, high frequencies, sorry, to the back of the pot. And the back of the pot is connected to the ground on the track. So these are grounding completely. So what this is doing is it's taking from the output and between the wiper, wherever it goes, this is literally just acting as a variable resistor here. And a variable resistor, which in conjunction with the other parts of the circuit, which we're looking at this in isolation, it doesn't quite make sense. But we're changing the resistance that high frequencies see to ground. And here you can see the entire circuit in your strap. And as you can see, in comparison to all the wires you saw at the start, there's really not a lot going on there. And the main reason for that is the fact that most of the wires are coming off the pickups and the tone. And most of that's just done in the switching. So the circuit itself, at any one position, there's really not much going, going on and connecting to each other. And if that doesn't make any sense to you, let's put these next to the symbols. So, this is our switch, this is our tone, which is a potentiometer, this is our capacitor connected to the tone, middle tone also a potentiometer, and volume is also a potentiometer. And this is the spring claw. The way in which all this works is, as we've already discussed in the switch, this and this both work together. So that's, those are the two sides of the switch. And what that means is they switch together. So position one here, for instance, position one here, position two is, well, that, that'd be position three, the sort of the second connection or lug to it, as uh, position two on the switch would be one and two connected. And um, you can see it switches neck pickup, goes to neck tone, the middle, it goes connects both, so neck and middle pickup, and that would connect both neck and middle tone. And then you'd have just middle, which would connect to just middle here in the second lug position. And then on the bridge pickup, if you're familiar with strats, you'll know there's no tone control on there because there's a third lug on this side of of the switch as well, which doesn't actually connect to anything. And then once the switch has decided which two things here are in parallel, it goes into volume. So we have a parallel circuit coming off from the pickup here. And that goes either to the volume or through the capacitor. 
uh, or the potentiometer, then the capacitor. And what we do here is we vary the resistance. So this resistance, in comparison to this resistance, decides how much of of the frequencies that can pass through the capacitor, which we, you've already decided by having a certain value of capacitor, are going to be bled off the circuit. So that's why as you turn your volume down, which means you're increasing the resistance that is seeing to the output jack, you lose treble as more of it comes out of the neck, because if you see a higher resistance here, comparatively the resistance here is lower, which even in real terms it will be the same. But if you're presenting more here, that means that the charge is more likely to go over here. And as you can see from the tones, the, the, this diagram was made way back in the 50s when capacitors were pretty expensive, so they tried to cut costs as much as they could by using the same capacitor. So literally all it's doing is both of them are going through that and going through the same capacitor to ground. So ground is always where we bleed off everything. So volume is literally bleeding off the entire signal. So what it's doing is it's showing two resistances as we've talked about on the pot already. You're seeing one resistance straight to output. You're seeing another resistance to ground. As we change it, we see different resistances. If we look at the circuit diagram again, we can draw on the three paths that the signal can take. Now, it can take if it's in neck or middle position, or the in-between position, it can take one path through the capacitor and the tone potentiometer, which potentiometer depends on whether it's neck or middle, but either way it's seeing the same thing there. It can take a path through the volume potentiometer into the output, the output jack, and it can take a path through the entire volume potentiometer to ground. And if we break these up one by one, we can see each individual path. Now, the first path that the signal can take is the tone path, and that's through the tone potentiometer, either the neck or middle or in position two, both, um, and then the capacitor to ground. And the way in which this works is the, the frequencies that are higher than the cutoff point of the capacitor flow through it like a short circuit to ground. So the potentiometer just acts as a variable resistor right in front of this capacitor to ground. And the second path that the signal can take is through the volume pot, and this is through lugs one and two. Lug one being the input from whichever pickup or pickups are active at any one time, and then to lug two which is connected directly to the output jack. Now, uh, again, this is like a variable resistance here, which it, it is the way in which it reacts with path three that matters here. But again, it, it's just, as you change the potentiometer and twist it, it shows a different resistance in front of the signal before it can get to the output jack. And the last path that the signal can take is through the entirety of the volume potentiometer to ground. And the value of this is always going to be the value of the potentiometer, whether that be 250k or 500k in the majority of cases. And the way in which this works is, as the potentiometer is switched, then the path that the signal sees to the output on lug 2 is going to increase, and the signal or rather the resistance from lug 2 to lug 3 is also going to decrease. So that means that there's going to be higher attenuation there. And now it's time to bring this video to a close. Thank you for watching and in the next video I'm going to be running you through the design and the prototyping process of a new humbucker concept I've been playing around with recently. So if you don't want to miss that, don't forget to subscribe and turn your notifications from me on.